funny because since we've opened up, amen, a few years back, we always sing that song for offering, amen. Come on. I tried changing it a few times, amen, but we always fall back to that, amen. Yeah. But when I say we, I mean I fall back to that. Because right, I'm the one directing it, but. But you know what? Uh, uh, how many know when you're when you're a kid, you would see you would see things. You're like like. Uh, let me explain. So I remember when I was a kid, and I never really tell this story, amen. Because it's an embarrassing story, amen. But here we go. So when I was a kid, and I like to say it was before my time, and I saw it on reruns, but I didn't, unfortunately. You remember that TV show, The Happy Days, amen. Uh, yeah. See, you guys are old too, just like me. Yeah. See, and what happened was. I remember being little. I would like to say I was this little, but I don't know if I was. I'm sure I wasn't. And and you would see you would see like uh, the Fonz, amen. Remember the Fonz, amen. Uh, Henry Winkler, yeah. amen. You know Henry Winkler is a, a sweet man. He's a good man, amen. But he's not like the Fonz, amen. It's a different type of person, amen. But nonetheless, his character, the Fonz, we'll stick with that. I remember growing up being a little kid. My grand my grandson, he's all, he's gonna be two next month. And he loves that movie, the movie Cars, amen. And he and I heard him in the living room. What is he saying? He's all ka-chow, ka-chow. What the heck is he saying? What's wrong with him? Is he okay? Pat him on the back. And uh, but what it is, my wife goes, no, it's on Cars. The the the, the little car. He's always saying ka-chow, ka-chow. Mm -hmm. I guess when it gets something exciting, I guess. Well, on Happy Days, the font used to always say, hey, uh -huh. amen. And I, I guess I was little, and I used to go around doing that all the time. And my, I remember my grandfather used to call me the Fonz, amen. My cousins used to make fun of me and call me the Fonz, amen. I remember I, as a little kid that had the coolest shirt in the world, amen. It was a, it was a thumbs up, amen. I said, hey, amen. <laughs> but I remember growing up looking at that and saying, you know what? Man, the Fonz is cool, man. That guy's cool. I want, to, I want to meet the Fonz. I want to hang out with the Fonz, amen. <laughs> you know, a few years ago, amen, you know, we, we go to a lot of places with the church and before before we opened up here, before we start pastoring here, and and uh, I would go places and I would see Pastor Armando, Amen, and his wife, and I remember looking at him. I remember he doesn't know this, Amen, but I'd look at him and say, Man, he's cool. <laughs> he is. He just looks cool, man. He does. He just he is that, that just that cool. You meet people that just seem cool, man. They're just like man, they're cool. Kind of intimidating. He's too cool for me. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I've had the pleasure. Amen. Of getting to know Pastor Mondo, and and you know what? He's 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 a tremendous man of God. Amen. I don't invite just anybody to the church. Everybody knows that. My church, they know that. I don't invite just anybody. And but but Pastor Mondo, Amen. He has, he's he's shown himself to be the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. He doesn't change. He is a man of God. And, and you know, and I, and, 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 I, and I tease about, you know what, he's going to split the sea in half and we'll make highways out of it, walks on water and everything, amen. In my mind, he is, amen, because he's that cool, amen. But you know what, it is a pleasure, amen, to have, to have this man of God here. I, I am honored that he would come. I'm honored that his church would take time out of their way to drive all the way down here, amen. No, they didn't come from Little Rock, Arkansas, amen. <laughs> it was a Little Rock, California. I never knew that, amen. And you know what? They're in a small town, amen. I drive through there all the time, amen, because of work. And, and and you blink, amen, you miss it, amen. And, and But there's revival, amen. Yeah. But revival comes when there's people with the heart of God, amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. So you know what? I am grateful, I am thankful, and I am honored, amen to call Pastor Armando my friend, amen. So let's give him a warm welcome as he comes amen. forward. Hallelujah, can you hear me? Yes. Amen, hallelujah. I'm a street preacher, amen. So, you know, in reality, I don't need a mic, hallelujah, <laughs> amen. Uh, been preaching on the streets since uh, over 30 years ago, or about 30 years ago, when I was in the men's home, hallelujah. There, we had a men's home in San Diego, and I was so blessed to go there, and I thank God for it, because there I learned to walk on water, hallelujah. <laughs> God's good, church, he, he, he is, amen. And, and, and I appreciate truly the invitation, amen. Um, I am honored, I'm humbled, amen. I also know your pastor. 
Uh, you know what I mean? And, and I've seen him from a distance at times too. I've seen him, you know, giving a report in conference. And I see the excellence in him. Amen. And I could come here and I could see that that he maintains that, him and his wife, Sister Martha, amen. And, and I truly appreciate and I'm honored, amen, to be here. Amen. And as far as walking on water and splitting the seas, <laughs> let me tell you, I've tried it. It hasn't worked, amen. It hasn't worked, but believe me, amen. Uh, I'm like every man, especially when we're new converts, amen. Man, we cast out demons out of dogs. And it, it didn't matter. Hallelujah. Anywhere we walked, we were praying for people. You see people in wheel, wheelchairs and in the hospital, and you just love doing these things. We grew up right there in Echo Park, amen, where we had our church. It's where I first got saved with Pastor uh, uh, Bobby Rodriguez, amen, and then Pastor Dean, as you might know, amen, took over the church. And there we grew, amen, in, in the things of God. And, and believe me, demons were coming in all the time, hallelujah, amen, and we learned to deal with them, amen. We learned to love the people, and cast out the demons, hallelujah. And it's a big blessing, amen. Myself, my wife, she basically came into the church. I was just out of the men's home when her and her sister first came in. And you know, uh, I heard her testimony. I heard how she took a gun from some guys one time and she was driving and she was shooting out the window at them, amen. And, and you know, when I heard that, I go, God, that's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I hope you don't mind. I, I'd love to call her up for a test. Amen. Amen. The fire trap is in my life. Amen. I'd just like to thank God for my salvation. <sighs> um, I was, it's next Saturday, it'll be 29 years ago that I walked into the house of God. Um, I was 21 years old when uh, I first walked into a Christian church. I was raised in a Catholic home. I didn't know nothing about Christianity. Um, my motives for going to church were not the right motives. Um, I think I was one of those that said, that was told to uh, just come and check it out one time. You know, when Pastor Ben mentioned that earlier, I said, I think I was one of those. And um, as I went to church, you know, I, I was involved with drugs. I was involved with the neighborhood. I was a gang member, a gang banging, and, you know, but I also was at the club, you know, on the weekends. I was running around, you know, with different men and doing different things and different drugs. And I was 21 years old, I was a single mother, you know, but I was tired of living the way I was living. Yeah. You know, I went to church and I remember sitting, walking into the church and just sitting there. And I remember the worship and it was just totally different than what I knew church to be like. I remember sitting there um, and I remember God just started the Spirit of God was just thick in that place. Amen. You know, with, without understanding what was going on and what I was feeling, I knew that what I was feeling was something real. Wow. And um, so I, I, I didn't have plans to stay there or nothing, but, you know, because it felt so good and it felt so real, I kept coming to church. I continued to come to church. It took me a while before I came into a Sunday morning service because I'd be up all night drinking and partying and getting high and I couldn't get up in the morning and you know get to church but you know I learned to do that as I kept coming to church I learned to come on Sunday mornings and you know I was taught to commit my life to God I was told I was encouraged to and I learned to do that and I want to say that 29 years later I'm still here because I committed my life to God Amen. you know God delivered me from drugs. Mm -hmm. He delivered me from the streets. He, you know, he, he restored my dignity. You know, he changed my life, you know. You. Nobody could have done that for me but the power of God. Amen. And I want to encourage you today, you know. I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know what's going on or 
But I want to encourage you to commit your life to God. Amen. You know, God won't do you wrong. God is faithful. He's, his love is real. God is a good God. You know, God has done so much for me in my life. You know, he's helped me in my marriage. You know, he's helped me at home with my family, my kids. I have two daughters right now that are on drugs, they're messed up, you know. But I committed my life to God 29 years ago. I gave God my word. I told him that this is what I wanted and I wanted to serve him, you know. So I have to remain committed. I don't know if you're a mom and your kids are messed up. I'm going to tell you and I want to encourage you, stay committed to God, yeah. you know. It doesn't matter how it sounds, how it looks. Man, I hear stuff, people tell me stuff, man. Your girls, I see them do this, I see them at the motel, you know, smoking meth all night, left their kids at home. You know, I hear things and I'm like, you know, I need to stay committed and unmovable because God's gonna save my girls. You know, God has called them, they have a, God has a plan for their life and there's purpose for them as well, you know. So if you're a mom and your children are out there running amok, doing the most, commit your life to God. Amen. You know, Amen. there's promises in his word for us parents, you know. He says that he will do it. Yeah. You know, this isn't just for us. That's it's right. for our children as well. Yeah. Amen. And I just yeah. encourage you to stay faithful, stay committed, no matter, you know, what you hear, how it sounds, how it looks. Trust God that he's going to do something in yes. their lives, that he's going to bring them. And same thing in your church. Amen. You know, sometimes it looks like, man, where did everybody go or where's everybody at? <laughs> you stay focused. You stay right. committed. Right. You know, God's going to build his house right. because that's what he said. He's going to build his house. Yes. You know, stay committed. Back up your pastors. Yes. Amen. Back up your pastors. Right. There's so many blessings in backing up the man and the woman of God. Yes. So right. many blessings. Amen. I know that because I've learned to do those things in my pastors. And I'm a blessed woman today. Amen. And I just encourage you guys, continue to press forward. Serve God no matter what. Stay committed. Amen. And God's going to take you places. Amen. You know, I'm just yeah. an old girl from the neighborhood. I didn't know nothing but Echo Park. Because that's where I grew up at. <laughs> you know? But today, I've gotten to know other countries. God took me to other places. Amen. You know, other countries to minister, to encourage, to, you know, share my testimony. You know, so stay committed. God's going to take you places Amen. and do some things in your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I always get a little nervous when I call it up. Because sometimes I go, man, she's going to take all my time. <laughs> you no time to preach, but she was gracious today. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 24. Amen. Proverbs chapter 24. Amen. I also uh, want to shout out, amen, to Pastor Robert and his wife. Amen. Thank you for coming and joining us. Man, I feel like I got backup, hallelujah. <laughs> amen. You know, when you get around men and women of God, you feel good, amen. You feel excited. You feel, man, you could walk on water. You could split the sea, amen. You know, you could climb any mountain and go down any valley. And you don't worry about the crooked roads because you know, amen, with the team, amen, you're going you're gonna to go straight, amen. You're going to be there, amen. And that's what God called us to all do, amen to support one another, yeah. to back up one another, and just to be there, amen? Sometimes it's just being there, amen? Yeah. Seeing somebody walk in, seeing what they're, you know, you can feel when people are going through things. Right. And, and sit next to them and ask them questions. And they might not even say anything at first, but sooner or later, they're going to they're gonna start pouring out. Yes, and you're going to be there to, to help them out. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 to 6. Amen. Some of us recognize this. Some of us even have studied it. Amen. And I just want to bring it out and establish a platform here. Amen. Where I could launch out into some preaching. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. And the word of God says, this is the English Standard Version. It says, by wisdom a house is built. L listen to, to what the word of God is saying here. By wisdom. It's not by your good looks. It's not because, you know what I mean, you say the right words or anything else. It's by wisdom that the house is built. And by understanding, it is established. Verse 4, it says, by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant uh, riches. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. When, when you, you, you allow wisdom and knowledge and understanding to help build your house, and help build, amen, even your surrounding, your life, your job, amen. amen. Verse 5 says, a wise man is filled, is full of strength. How many of you feel strong today? Mm -hmm. It's because you're a wise man. When we start feeling weak and, and, and depressed and we're filled with anxiety, amen, you know, something's wrong. We're, we're not using the mind that God has given us. Amen. And it says, a, a, a wise man is filled with strength and a man of knowledge enhances his mind. He gets stronger because of the knowledge he's accumulating. Verse 6 says, for by wisdom, guidance, uh, for for by wise guidance, you can wage war. Amen. Yeah. You can't just run out into a crowd and start fighting. You're going to get whooped. Amen. Right. It takes some wisdom and guidance. And it says by a, a, a abundance of counselors, there is victory. What is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Amen. Well, well wisdom, amen, it, it is, it wisdom involves a healthy dose of perspective. What is perspective? It's when you could look at something and you're able to draw something out of it, amen? It's kind of like what an architect does, amen? He has a sheet of paper. He knows he got to build the house. He sees the property, amen? And all of a sudden, he starts designing. What's it going to need, amen? Is it going to need restrooms? Is it going to need a kitchen, amen? A living room, a study room, amen? You know what I mean? It takes perspective, wisdom, amen? It takes a, a healthy dose of perspective and the ability of sound judgment. Knowledge, knowledge is just knowing. Knowing. You learned something, you read something, you accumulated knowledge. Amen. Sometimes we think like, man, I'm praying for wisdom. Yes, pray for all the wisdom. Pray for understanding. But when it comes to knowledge, you better seek after it. Amen. You better go read some books. Amen. You better talk to somebody who knows. Amen. Because let me tell you, there's always somebody that knows more than us. That's right. Amen. You help me to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, Lord. I pray that your spirit will accompany my words. I pray for a double dose of your spirit, Father. I pray for a double dose of your anointing, Father. Help us to just understand your word, Father. I pray that our minds will grow here, Father. That you will help us to understand wisdom a lot more, Father. That we understand that knowledge we're going to have to dig in deep. We're going to have to study. We're going to have to read. We're, we're going to have to listen, Lord. But you want to give us wisdom. Amen. You even asked us, Father, if we lack wisdom, to pray and that you will give it to us in abundance and you will not hold back tonight, Father. We are praying for wisdom and understanding, Father. Help us to seek after knowledge. In Jesus' mighty name and the church says, Amen. Amen. I have entitled this message, The Art of Thinking. The art of thinking, hallelujah. Amen. And Because I, I want to tell you, it's a dying, you know what I mean, art. It's a dying art. We just don't think no more. Amen. We go through life just following whatever comes our way. We wake up in the morning. Amen. We put on our shoes if they're there. If not, we go find them. Amen. You know what I mean? And we get dressed and we're out the door and we're driving down the street. Amen. We get to work. Amen. We punch in and all we do is say, what do I do? 
Where do I go? And sometimes we're so programmed, amen, we ain't know exactly what to do, amen. We go to our job site, we pull out our tools, we get to work, amen. You know, no thinking involved, amen. There, you know what I mean? Not once do we stop and say, God, you know what, I need a little, wis little wisdom here, you know what I mean? Because, you know, uh, life is getting a little humdrum. I need a change. I need something to happen. I need a miracle. I need something to go on in my life that is going to help me to stay focus on what you called me to do. Amen. Right. Come on. I got this title from a book I seen. Amen. It's called The Art of War. How many ever heard of that book or read part, a partial of the book or all of it? Amen. Well, this book, amen, was written by generals and, and those that were in the military. And, and it, what it discusses, amen, what it deals with, amen, is the strategy of warfare. The strategy of warfare, amen, where somebody had to sit down and think, okay, this is our enemy, this is our military, now how are we going to get over here to defeat the enemy? You know what I mean? Because sometimes we think like, you know, we see a movie and all the hell is charged and everybody starts running towards the center. What well, does it work that way? Amen. You know what I mean? When we when they were fighting over the United States and, and we were trying to break away from Europe, amen. You know what I mean? Well, we, we started bringing in these guerrilla fighters. Amen. Because everybody would. You know, they, they, they put their guns, amen, they put whatever there is in, they pack it down, amen, and then they step up, aim, shoot, amen. And when they shot, amen, then the other side did the same, amen. So they were just shooting each other, you know, <laughs> just uh, sitting ducks. <laughs> but here we come and we find these hunters, amen. amen. And they became like guerrilla fighters where they learned like, no, no, I'm not standing out in the open and, and shooting, amen. I'm going to use a little strategy. I'm going to think, amen, wow. that I'm after a prey, amen, that I'm hunting, amen. And that takes strategy. Have you ever seen a hunter? He's just not running after a deer to see if he could catch it. No, he's strategizing. He's stopping, he's thinking, he's walking, he's creeping up to yeah. this creature, amen. And at the right moment, when everything's silent, amen, he pulls the trigger and he shoots his prey, amen. It takes strategy. And in the kingdom of God, we must learn to develop strategy. Strategy for our homes, strategy for our churches, strategy for our workplace, amen. Strategy for, for school, amen. amen. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we can just go to the school like I did, amen. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, okay, I'm here. Yes, I'm here, amen. And I find any reason to walk out the back door. Amen. No strategy for my life. You know what I mean? Didn't even think that these things, amen, could help me out in the future. To better my life, to uh, better my career, to put money in my pocket. If I could speak as plainly like that, because sometimes kids, amen, they don't understand everything else. Tell them about money, amen. Oh, yeah, I got a nephew that loves making money. <laughs> he hates listening to everybody, amen. He try to give him strategy, and next thing you know it, he's out on left field doing whatever he wants. But he's got a, a, a sense to make money. Yes. I, I see him, and I'm like, Sales. Do you know sales? If you truly get involved in sales, and I'm talking about big corporations, it, it, it's one of the top paying jobs today. Sales, amen. So I'm thinking sales, amen. And this kid could do it. And I start remembering the things that I did not pick up on. That I've learned today that I had to learn it as I'm older. Hallelujah. I won't tell you how old I am. But as I've gotten older, I learned that, you know, how valuable uh, education is. Amen. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They, 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 you know, he comes home and goes, well, you know, a lot of this math stuff we're never going to use in the world. They even tell you. I go, it, it doesn't even matter. Come on. The, the, the reason you got to do uh, trigonometry, uh, trigonometry and all this yeah. other stuff, amen, mm -hmm. is because it gets your mind thinking. That's right. It's the only purpose, amen, for, for these types of math. It's just to get the, the ball rolling. The thing, you know, the thing up here going, your brain, your thought patterns, amen. You learn to strategize. You learn to think, amen. You learn to solve problems, amen. 
You know what I mean? Us in the church, there's so many people that come into the church, so many problems, so many hang-ups, amen? Mm -hmm. But if they would sit, amen, and think about who they're serving now, who they came to be, amen, how Christ is developing their life, amen, they would be able to sit down and think what God wants to do in their life. Remember the God that created the heavens and the earth, amen, the cosmos, amen, you know, he's from here to there, amen, there's no stopping him, but he's the one working in our life, and we could, if we could sit down, Sit down and think where he wants to take us right. and allow him to build it. and us communicating with him, building a strategy for our lives. There, there's nothing There's nothing that we couldn't accomplish. Come on, that's right. right. It's, it's why the Tower of Babel, amen. What did God say, amen? Hey, you know what I mean? The, 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 you know, men working together and they could accomplish anything. Amen. And I mean, there, there's no telling what they can do. See, God wants to help us. Yes. But we got to think. There, there, there's a, in the Time magazines, amen, once a year, they, they put out the most, uh, 100 most influ, uh, influential people, amen, throughout the, the earth, amen. And, and, and you know what I mean? Uh, so they, they put it out, amen. These people are influencing the earth. And I started reading some of the names. The Rock, you know what I mean? The Rock, who, who would think The Rock? Wait a minute, he's a wrestler, amen? But if you look into his life, they see he's one of the most busiest people in Hollywood today. That he's always got something going. I mean, I told my son the other day, I don't know what we were watching, amen, but The Rock was in there, amen? And I'm like, you know, that guy, every time he gets in a movie, he takes it over. Right. When they do uh, part two or part three, next thing you know what, the other people aren't in there. Amen. The Rock's in there. Amen. <laughs> he took the movie over. Amen. Go and watch wrestling. Amen. I don't know if we have any wrestling fans here. Amen. But but he's all over the place. He's in the movies. He, he, he's got businesses. He's got things going on. Amen. And his life. Amen. His character influences people. Yes, amen. Taylor Swift. I'm just a little country girl. <laughs> you know that little girl has made more, more uh, has gotten more awards than just about anybody? Mm -hmm. Amen. So little girl, amen. But let me tell you, she, she went from one label to the other, amen. She, she moved on, amen. But they wouldn't sell her the copyrights for her music, many of the musics that, that she established there. Wow. So you know what she did? She started rewriting them. You know what I mean? Let them keep the old copies. I'm going to do them all over. New copies. And, and not only that, new music. Amen. And she's always busy. And her life, amen, this little country girl, has influenced many of the young people today. Yeah. Madonna, how many of you heard of Madonna, amen? Maybe you don't hear about her much, amen? But ask you some of the, the parents and, and the grandparents here, amen? I remember my little sister used to dress like Madonna, amen? Had the big, thick bow and everything, amen? I walk into the house, I'm all cholled out, amen? And I mean, I see my little sister, amen? Madonna, what the heck? <laughs> hey, but you know what I mean? She influenced people. Then you have Donald Trump, amen. You have Nancy Pelosi, uh, Benjamin Nahu, whatever his name is, amen, the, the Israel guy, amen. You know what I mean? These are men and women that influence. It doesn't matter what you think about them. They have influenced the world, amen. And they did it all through strategies, amen. You know, Donald Trump, amen, he's gone broke a few times, but yet he's still a millionaire. Why? Because he's got a millionaire mind, amen. He's always thinking. He's always strategizing, amen. You know what I mean? You look at a millionaire's life, amen. You know what I mean? He wakes up early in the morning. A lot, of, a lot of us think like, oh, he's just always busy, always working, man. I don't want to, you know, give my life to all that, this and that. No, that's not how they start their life. Mm -mm. They wake up in the morning. The first thing they're doing is thinking about them. They start meditating. I don't know what gods they believe in, amen. But they start meditating, amen. They, they start 
exercising and they have a, a good, decent breakfast before they go into the world and start taking care of business. They have goals. They have a strategy. They're, they're moving forward. They're always constantly thinking, amen. But we come into church, amen, and we fall asleep, amen, and God <laughs> wants to help us. You know what I mean? We allow things to go in one ear and out the other. Amen. Right. You know what I mean? Your, your pastor comes here and preaches over and over, but yet we could go home and still run into the same rut that we're always in. That's right. You know what I mean? Because there's no change. There's no strategy. We make no goals for ourselves. Amen. Lady Gaga, amen, influences the world. Right. You know, she's the only woman that could make men sound like babies. <laughs> amen. One, one reporter said, man, he was there in China, amen, and, and he had all these people calling her name, and, and, and they were just going, Gaga, Gaga. He had all these men <laughs> calling her, and they were, Gaga, Gaga, Gaga. And I'm like, grown men, amen. And, and they're, you know what I mean? They're acting like little babies. But yet she's <laughs> influencing the world. She's doing things with her life. You know what I mean? Terrible life. She started off, amen. She was abused. She went through all kinds of things. She was picked on from bullies at, at school and stuff like that. But look at where she's at today. Yes, come on. Come on. You know what I mean? But it's all through strategy. We have people that are do influencing the world that are doing great things and making great changes, not just in the political world, not just in the uh, 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 Hollywood world, amen, but in other parts of the world, amen, and Yemen, amen, where one woman stood up and, and, and you know, because of all the battle that was going on there, you know, these everybody was trying to say that they were the good guys and the other ones were the bad guys, but everybody was getting hurt in the middle, and, and this one lady rises up and says, you know what? There's no heroes in this. There's only criminals and victims, amen? And you could see all the, the leaders, amen, over there in the eastern a part of the world, amen, rising up, getting upset, amen, because what she was saying was true. And she started creating a, a strategy to help many of these people that were being hurt. Another woman, amen, Maria uh, Rasa, amen, in, 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 uh, in, in the Philippines. You know what I mean? She stood up against corrupt government. Wow. You know, we think Mexico has corrupt government, amen. You know, the Philippines are just as bad. And then you want to look inward to the United States and you see all the things that are going on today with right. our government. That's right. And she would stand up and, and come against that. Asking this question, what is the line that you won't cross, amen? Because many people won't sit down and create a strategy to combat these things. Come on. How about in our own lives, amen? You know what I mean? When the enemy comes and attacks and comes in like a flood, amen? What is the line that you will not cross, amen? To rise up and fight against them. Will you not pray? Will you not fast? Will you not read? Will you not get closer to God? Or are you going to let the enemy just take over? Because there is a line that you will not cross. Because you have not sat down and created a strategy for your home or for your life. Amen. Or for your church. That's right. Esther, amen. Powerful story in the Bible, the Old Testament, amen. Mm -hmm. Esther, amen, for such a time as this, amen. Verses four, uh, chapter 4, verses 10 and, six, uh, 10 and 16, it says this. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, Mordecai was her uncle, Esther, amen. Many of you know the story already, amen. She, she, she's in the palace, amen. She's married to the king, amen. But yet the, 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 there's going to be a persecution against the Jews, amen. And it's coming from the palace, amen. And her uncle hears about it, amen. And he starts rising up, amen. And he goes, amen, and sits down in front of the gates to the temple, amen, or gates to the palace, amen. 
He comes in in, in sackcloth, amen, and, and he sits there and he starts howling and he starts yelling, amen, about the persecution, about the things that aren't right, amen. But yet, you know what I mean? Many looked at him as a crazy man. As a matter of fact, Esther, when she heard about it, because her servants came to tell her about it, amen, she's like, oh man, he's looking like a madman out there. You know what I mean? Man, if the king finds out about it, man, they're going to put him to death. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to take him out, amen? Right. Because, you know, you're not supposed to, you know, approach the palace like that. Mm -hmm. Or even get close to the gates. You're supposed to be hooked up. You're supposed to have the drip, amen? <laughs> you're, you're supposed to be hooked up, dressed up, amen, looking sharp, amen? amen. And, and, and you know what I mean? And here he comes in sackcloth. What is sackcloth? It's like a potato sack that he put over him. And then he would go and throw dirt on him and all this, amen. And, and she starts to worry. He goes, man, they're going to kill my uncle. Uh -huh. And she sends him, uh, says to Mordecai, all the king's officers and, and the, the people of the royal uh, provinces know that. And she's done, in other words, she's telling him, listen, everybody knows the law. If I go to the king when he hasn't summoned me, amen, I could be put to death. They could take me out. You know what I mean? And, and she, she, you know, she's trying to tell her uncle that so, so that maybe he'll calm down. But you see, Mordecai had the strategy. He understood, amen, that, 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 that Esther wasn't in the palace for nothing. It was for such a time as this, amen, that she was there. And his strategy, amen, was to get her to wake up and understand that she's there for a reason. She's not there, amen, to look pretty, amen. She's not there so she could have all these servants taking care of her, amen, and feeding her, and that she could dress nice and all these things. No, there was a strategy that God had placed together long before to save for the salvation of the Jewish people back then, of the Israelites. Yes, there was a strategy. Mm -hmm. And they goes back and forth, amen, with her and her uncles, like, man, you know, if I go to the king right now, they're going to kill me, amen. And, and finally, amen, uh, her uncle Mordecai tells her, listen, you're not catching this. Don't think that you're going to escape this because you're in the palace. Don't think that you're going to get away from the battles. Don't think that the enemy's not going to come against you. Don't think that, you know what I mean, all I got to do is come to church and sit here and, and, and everything's going to be all right. No, we are in a battle. Yeah. We're in a fight. We're in the fight for our lives, yeah. not only ours, but our families as well, our children oh. as well, for their salvation. Yeah. We're Come in on, a man. battle. And he's telling her, listen, don't think. Come on. Because you, have, you think you have escaped this. Mm -hmm. right. That you and your family is going to be all right. He's part of her family. Right. Yeah. He goes, listen. God will create another strategy. Mm -hmm. And he'll bring some salvation for his people somewhere else. But if you don't rise up at this time, mm -hmm. it's going to be over. Yeah. You're going to feel the impact yes. of the enemy. You're going to feel, if you don't rise up at this time, and God is calling us as a people of God to rise up, sit down, Think a little bit. Create a strategy for your life. Create a, a strategy for your home, for your church, amen? And then get up and take care of business. Yes. And the light goes on. Man. Man. Esther says, man, listen, okay, all right? This is what we're going to do. You guys fast. Me and my servants, we're going to fast here all together. You know, January's coming up. We all love the Daniel fast. <laughs> but, but it's strategy. It's strategy as we go into the new year, amen? But, you know, sometimes we're just going to have to forget about the Daniel fast, amen, uh -huh. and, and oh, really get yeah, into yeah, it yeah. and yeah. really dig in, amen? Oh. This year, I believe, amen, that God is going to move, amen? Yeah. But he's 
looking yeah. for a people that have strategy. Yes. A people that is sitting down and thinking. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, okay, right. how are we going to overcome this? Okay, wow. how could I build this man. ministry? Okay, man, maybe, maybe I just got two guys that are rushing right now, but what can I do to build that yeah. ministry? Yeah. What can I do in my Sunday class? Maybe you think, well, you know, I'm a little bit older. I can't do a lot. Amen. Amen. But you got a mind. Mom, That's right. You can strategize. Yeah. It puts you in the Sunday class, amen. Start thinking, okay, how can I teach these kids the things of God that will make them rise up, amen, yeah. and become soldiers and warriors for the kingdom that will trust the, the, the very works of God? Amen. How can we do oh, this? Man. He tells them, okay, all right. I thought about it. I'm thinking now. Amen. <laughs> I'm coming out of my comfort zone. I want you to go fast. We're going to do the same. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go before the king. And I, I'm sure she was praying for favor. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, give me a lot of favor. Amen. When I see the king, that, that he won't just strike me down dead, that he won't <laughs> cause me to go into the dungeon or anything like that. You know what I mean? She, she was real. Right. Because that was a possibility. That's right. So she walks up to the door, amen, the king's just filled with all kinds of pressure, all kinds of things falling on him, you know what I mean? Have you ever been in there, women, have you ever walked in the house and your husband's just sitting there? What are you doing just sitting there? You know, get up, do something, amen? <laughs> Wait a minute, he, he, he's going through all kinds of things, amen? A little strategy. Come on, amen. A little strategy. Right. Honey. That sometimes works, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you okay? You need prayer? Mm -hmm. Can I help you? Mm -hmm. well, what are you going through? Maybe I could sit down with you. I'm your yes. helpmate. Uh, we, we could right. figure this out together. We could strategize together. We could do things together. Amen. We could build this kingdom together. Amen. We could, we could build our home. We could pray for our kids. We could do all these things together. Yeah. She goes before the king, amen, and the, the king pulls out his scepter, amen, which means like, it's all right. It's all right, honey, come here. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to see you. I've just been so busy. Right. Husbands, we get like that. We get, we get so busy, amen. And, and, and what a beautiful thing to see your wife walk up in a negligee. <laughs> that's, that's something else, amen. That's something else. Oh, wow. But you walk up, amen. <laughs> And then you pull out your scepter and says, enter. Uh -huh. Enter into my rest. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Man, I'm picturing that. Man. <laughs> and me sitting there in my, you know, I mean, my crown and my, you know, my, oh. my, my throne. Hallelujah. <laughs> the restroom. Praise <laughs> <laughs> you, Jesus. Amen. So she goes. And she doesn't just start jamming him with the problem that, that's mm -hmm. going on. She doesn't start to have, laying all this stuff. Hey, do you know that hey man, hey man came up and, and he you know he fooled you into making this decree and, and now all my people are gonna suffer? Oh, you didn't know I was a Jew, but I'm Jew. Did you <laughs> no, no, she she created a strategy. That's yeah. right, come on. She invited him. Yes. And she invited the enemy. Uh-huh. She was not gonna make it dinner. Come on. I, I love when my wife makes dinner. <laughs> she just lays everything out. Everything's there, amen. We were talking about that today. We had uh, uh, the evangelist, amen, Vince, come over, amen. And, you know, he, he heard about my wife's beauty, amen. So, you know, instead of taking him to go eat, he goes, no, I'm saving it. I'm saving it. That first couple of days, I'm saving it, amen. Come Sunday, amen, after service, man, he had two plates, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. And, and, and it was a blessing. Amen. And this is what she did. She, she, she strategized. She's created a supper for him. Mm -hmm. And she let him get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know what I mean? And then she started laying things on him. One at a time. Where he was able to sit and understand. And wait a minute. She's not the one hurting me. Because sometimes husbands, we, could, we, start, we start feeling that way, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, our wife's trying to tell us something, and all of a sudden we're like, man, you know what I mean? You're telling me that again? <laughs> what are you, the boss of me? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Yo, do we get like that, amen? Like, man, ease up, man. Uh, I don't want to hear all this right now. Right. But instead, she was able to just lay it down on him. And he started thinking, this, this woman loves me. She is caring. She is looking out after me. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and then she tells him the situation, amen. And he gets up and takes care of it. Takes care of it. But it takes strategy. Take strategy, amen. The enemy has a strategy, but it backfires, amen. The very gallows, amen, that he, he developed, amen, and built, amen, for the Jewish people or the very one that the enemy, amen, was hung on, amen. You know what I mean? The enemy, amen, he can't hurt you, amen. He can't touch you, amen. But what he uses is strategy against you, amen. And if you fall into it, amen, it's game on. It's game on if you fall into uh, anxiety. It's game on if you fall into anger. It's game on. You open the door. Amen. He strategizes. Amen. And we got to have a strategy to fight back. Amen. Come on. For what, he, uh, for what Esther had to do, amen, it was going to take uh, strategy. She needed to think. For everything we go through, there should be a strategy. For every strategy, there should there must be a time to think and meditate. For every time of thinking and meditating, there must be a goal set. Yeah. It's one thing I've been trying to teach my church. To develop goals in your life. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be? What do you want to become? How do you want to get there? And what time is it going to take to get there? Come yes, on. come on. I told them, if you don't have a goal, then you're not serious. Come on. Mm -hmm. You're just dreaming. Mm -hmm. A dreamer. Mm -hmm. You're just, oh, man, it would be so nice to be cruising. Yes. You, know, you know what I mean? Nice ride, this and that. But, but you haven't even got up to get a job. You know what I mean? It, it, what, what do you think is going to fall from heaven? Amen? You know, uh, money grows on trees. How many times haven't we heard that? Amen. And even that is a strategy of the enemy. No, what I'm telling you is sit down, meditate, pray, read God's word. Let him give you a strategy. Think about it for a while. How you're going to accomplish these things. Amen. Set a goal. Well, how long do you want to take in accomplishing that? What, what do you want to do? And it works for everything. Right. Let me get real simple here. It, it works for finding a job. Mm -hmm. it, it works for buying a car. It works for buying a house. Amen? And simple strategies. Yes. There were things we could just practice what, with. Sit down. Write things down. Uh, create goals. Strategize how you're going to get there. See, in a easy... Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verses 3, it says, Moses thought, amen, he sat down, he thought, he says, I must go over and look at this, a remarkable sight, why is it the bush doesn't burn up? Mm -hmm. See, Moses just walking along. And he stops and he sees a bush, amen, burning, amen. He could have passed it up. He could have just said, man, well, you know, uh, it won't be here tomorrow. You know what I mean? And keep on going. But he stopped and he thought. He, he started thinking, this bush is burning, right. but it's not burning up. Come on. Let me then create a strategy to walk over to it and find out why it's not burning. And he accomplished, amen, a, a meeting with God. He, he, he got there, amen. And, and this thought sent him on a, an adventure that is remembered to this day. How many times don't you hear preaching, amen, of Moses turning to the burning bush, amen? His thought, his strategy to turn and find out what was going on, amen. We are still talking about it, reading about it, studying about it, even to this right. day, amen. This is what it takes, church, to really create a, a strategy that's going to help us into yeah. the future, amen. Yeah. That's going to help our, our, our next generation coming, our children, our grandchildren, amen, that will serve God. If we strategize now, the Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. 
And I mean, a wise man strategizes. I mean, a wise man builds things. A wise man creates things. Amen. And he leaves it for who? His children. That's right. His children. Yes. Amen. Jeez. I'm very honest. Uh, That's the point, man. Come on. Amen. First, thinking is a dying art. We don't think no more, people. Man. We don't. We, we, we don't think about people's feelings. We don't think about, you know, how things are going to hurt people. We, we don't think about anything. Amen? Well, no, I'm very careful on that. Really? Let me give you an example. Amen? A sister walks into the church, amen? Beautiful dress, amen? But then you look down at her shoes and you're like, those shoes! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we trip. <laughs> you're like, I never did you stop to think that that was going to hurt her feelings. Right. Wow. That that pair of shoes, because you didn't like them ugly things, <laughs> you know I mean? that she'll never come back to the church again. That's right. Just little simple yeah. things that come we on. don't think oh, about. Come on. It's true, we don't stop to think anymore. Mm -hmm. We'll blame it on time. Mm -hmm. Or we're too busy. Or my kids, you know what I mean? They run around and I can't handle them. And, and I have no time to sit down and think. They don't let me think, my kids, amen, that you love, that, that you prayed for, that, that you wanted, amen. All of a sudden, they don't, they take up all my time. I can't think. My job, <laughs> amen. Your job requires thinking. Come on. I don't care what you do. You could be in, in a warehouse, amen, working on a manifest, amen, but it requires thinking. I know because, man, I was just a little hoodlum out in the streets, amen, but I got me a job in a warehouse, amen, and I'm there working, and I'm busy, and I'm doing my job, and I, I'm counting and doing manifest and, and setting things out and making sure everything's going to the right place that the boss took notice. It was a computer place. It was a computer place. And next thing you know it, I'm wearing a white jacket with my name on it. Oh, wow. I'm actually programming computers. Yeah. All I had to do was push a button, but at least I was in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was in there. Yeah. And I would watch them, amen. And, and they, you know, they would come out on the screen, just a bunch of words and signs and this and that. And, and, and you know, after a while, I noticed Things started changing, and then so I went and called the guy, and he goes, oh, that, that's just normal, and this and that. He goes, but it's good you know it's that. Come on. Because the last guy I put here didn't know that at all. Uh, Come on. Man. <laughs> See, there you go. we could strategize. We could work hard. We could think, man, you know what I mean? If I work hard, if I stop arguing with the boss and just work hard, amen, you know what I mean? I'm going to have their job. Amen. Come on. I have today. Yes. The guy that ran my company. I have his job today. Oh, Amen. Matter of fact, he got so upset, he yelled, Mondo, are you happy? You got my job? I'm like, yeah. It paid more. It paid more, right? Yeah. But, but I didn't want his job. I just wanted to get paid for what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And what I was doing right. was his job. Come on. As he came to work and just did whatever he wanted to do, I was running things. I was putting people to work. I was telling people what to do. I was going to the blueprints. I was doing the layouts. I was doing all the things that he should have done but wasn't doing, amen. Right. So what was the strategy? I'll do it. Right. And I'll get his pay. Come on. Amen. Come on. I made double. Yes, amen. amen. Than what I made back then when I took over his job. Man. Yes. yes. Strategy. I wake up in the morning. I think, what is my day? I, I, I got to worry now about my job, but also the church. So I got to strategize. I got to think. I, I got to see where, where we want to take it. Yes, we're going to run into things. Amen. The church is going to go up and it's going to go down. Amen. But you know, I don't look at the numbers. Amen. I look at the core of people that God, God is that's bringing. Right. Those that's that right. want to do something for God. Those that are establishing themselves. Those that are learning to listen to the preaching Amen. and start thinking about their lives and yes. how they could strategize and how they could create goals for their life. Come on, man. Amen. Come on. There's always going to be a reason not to think. I was ready to skip this part, but our wives. <laughs> <laughs> our wives. <laughs> you, know, you don't let me think. Hallelujah. <laughs> our husbands. Amen. All kinds of excuses for not thinking. 
all kinds of excuses for not thinking. One man said this, amen, it was kind of humorous, amen, uh, uh, Tim Leston, amen, you know, they're trying to think of ideas, amen, uh, how to grow the church, amen, and one man, amen, has this idea, amen, and he comes out, and, you know, as far as growing the church, it says, it says, while trying to find ideas to help grow the church, the pastor asks, besides calling every Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, does anyone else have any uh, 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 ideas to improve the church? <laughs> Did you get that? I mean, that was somebody's idea. Well, let's just call every Sunday Easter Sunday, and the people will come. No, I think they'll figure it out after a while. Right? Good strategy, amen, but I don't think it's going to last very long, amen? You see, you know what I mean? We, we, we need to see it and really think. You know, some of us are like, well, the pastor, you know, he's got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The pastor, not only does he split water, amen, he splits <laughs> peanut butter and jam. <laughs> you know, they put it on perfectly, yeah. amen. It's good, yeah. amen. Let's, let's, let, let's let them think about it. Okay. And we just come, enjoy the service. Never do we roll up our sleeves and put our hands to the plow. What's well, this a small church, you know what I mean? It's just, you know what I mean? How much help do you need? Let me tell you, I, I got to the church this morning, amen, expecting my ushers to be there. They, they didn't show up. Mm -hmm. And I get there, I thank God I got there early enough, amen, so I could sweep the floor, straighten out the chairs, mop, amen, you know what I mean? And, and, and even uh, clean the, the front door, the front door that everybody tells me there's no way we could take all their fingerprints off, they just don't come off. <laughs> I got them all, amen. You know what I mean? With a little strategy, a little muscle, amen. Yeah. And, and, and did both sides of the window, amen. Wow. I don't know, maybe they just do one side. <laughs> <laughs> we got to think, church. We got to think, how yeah. can we all participate? Yeah. See, I'm here to help. Because I know. Right. I know the strategy of the enemy. Uh, yeah, we'll lay heavy on, uh, on your pastor because he does got to do all the thinking for everybody. All the strategizing, amen. Yeah. When, when it would be so much easier, amen. All if you right. would come in and, and wow. pastor, how can I help? You want me to mop the floors? And then go think of a strategy. Okay, I got a bucket. There's some soap there, amen. Like my wife uses bleach for everything. A little bit of bleach. Amen. I, I think I could do this. What? I just get the mop and dunk it into the thing, and then I wring it out. I mean, okay, let me start on this side, amen, and work my way that way. That way, when the people start coming in, this side is dry, amen, and, and, and I can still wait for this strategy. Oh, come on, that's right. Strategy right. and helping out and, and what we could do. You know, that, that's where preachers come from. Yes. yes. That's where preachers from come from. I remember in the men's home. And I mean, being there, uh, you know what I mean? I, I remember these guys used to come into the men's home, amen. I, I, used, I you know what I mean? I, I really knew nothing about Christianity, amen. And, and I go in there, amen. Uh, I'm in the home, amen. Uh, you know, God heals me. I got a $800 a habit a day of heroin and cocaine. I've been doing speed balls all day long, amen, for, for months, amen. And, and, and I'm there, amen. And God heals me in two days, three days. I'm jogging around the home, amen. And, and, and you know, I start, I'm starting to learn things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I remember they would come and ask, hey, we need some guys to go help out over here, amen, and, and, and fix this, clean this yard so we could bring finances into the home so we could have food. Amen. Sounds good, right? right? You would think everybody was like, all right, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing anyways. I'm here. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm praying, but we already had our pray time, our read time, all that. And, and then I remember guys like, well, you know, I came into the home just to get close to God. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> oh, wow. I'm just going to sit here and read my Bible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fools. Fools. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. When they used to take me to go work, you know what I mean? You know, we, we would like, one time we were putting the floor in the sister's kitchen, amen? She was at work, amen? It was just me and, and one of the, the assistant pastors and a couple of the brothers that were doing the floor and stuff like that. And, and he goes up and opens up the refrigerator, amen? And we feast. <laughs> we feast. 
Thank God that she called afterwards and says, hey, whatever's in the refrigerator, you guys can have. <laughs> hey, thank God. God is good. Amen. Right? Right. We had a good time. Amen. We, you know, we, we had to think. We got to think as a church. Amen. We got to think why we're really here. Amen. If you think just by coming and sitting down is going to bring you closer to God, you, you, you're, you're fooling yourself. Come on. Right. That's right. It's when you get involved. Amen. Amen. It's when you do things. Things, amen, to help the build the kingdom of God where God starts speaking to you and giving you revelation, yeah. amen. You know what I mean? And, and then all of a sudden, I mean, you're taking that revelation, you're applying it to your life, you're putting it down on pen and paper, amen. You're putting messages together, amen. But you're not going to get a message, amen, just by sitting there. I preached the message one time, amen, that life creates sermons. Mm -hmm. You want to preach? You want to do things for God? Amen. You want to teach, amen? Well, you've got to live. Come on. You've got to get up, think of strategies, allow God to enlighten your eyes and enlighten your mind, amen, and start thinking of what you're really involved in Come on. and how you could accomplish things. Yes. Because we could think of all kinds of things. Listen, amen, 2 Kings, amen, chapter 5, amen, verse 20, it says, it's about the, the Hazite. How many of you know Gazai, amen, the servant of Elisha, amen, the man of God? Yes. The Bible said that, that he said, um, in, in the, the Christian study Bible, it says that he thought. It says, behold, my master had, had uh, spared Naaman, the Syrian, in not receiving uh, at his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, amen, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. I don't know if you know the story. But Naaman comes to Elisha, amen, and Elisha tells him, go dunk in yourself in the Jordan seven times, amen. At first he kind of rebounds, but then he thought about it. He goes, you know what? And I mean, thank God for, you know, young disciples that will say, hey, pastor, you know, um, what's he going to hurt you? Come on. If he would have told you to do something else, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You would have done it. You know, what I mean? you guys think uh, pastors are the ones that are supposed to think of everything. No, <laughs> we need help. That's right. Come on. And That's he right. encouraged him to just go do it. So Naaman goes and he dumps himself seven times. And on the seventh time he gets up, the Bible says that on his skin, remember he had a leprosy, amen, a deadly disease, but, but his skin was like a baby's skin. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. And he was so grateful that everything that he took, amen, you know what I mean, garments and silver and, and whatever he had, he was willing to give to Elijah. But Elijah said, no, this isn't the time for money and all these things, amen. You know what I mean? This is the time to show the power of God, amen. So Naaman takes off, amen, grateful, amen, thanking God, amen, for what he's done, amen. But here's Gehazi. And he runs after him. The Bible says that he thought, but he didn't think much. Right. He didn't think of the results. He didn't think that God was watching. So he runs after him and lies to him and tells him, hey, you know, some guys came, you know, from the barrio, and, you know, we want to get them a couple of penalties, amen. And so he takes it from them, and he goes and hides it. And Elisha comes to him. And now, now, like I said, he didn't think much. Right. Because he's seen miracles happen. He's seen God speak to the man of God. He's seen how God will come down and, and, and just move, amen, as, as he called him to move, amen. So Elijah, amen, wasn't, the, or, or Gehazi didn't think. And it cost him. Because the same disease that was on the name and amen fell upon Gehazi. There's other parts of the story of the Bible, women, that says that he just became like a gesture to the king, a, 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 a jokester, mm -hmm. one that would entertain the king. I mean, we gotta think, we gotta truly think about what God wants us to do in life. Amen. Right. Come on. You see, there is a priority goal. Amen. The Apostle Paul was was to know Jesus. The, the, the priority goal in the Apostle Paul's life was to know Jesus Christ, amen, as his, a, a, in a personal way. 
an intimate way and to know him to the degree that he would be conformed completely to the likeness of Christ. The Bible tells us that God has this same priority goal for each one of us. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 to 30 it says, For those who foreknew him, uh, for, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So that he would be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters and, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And, and those that he justified, he also glorified. Amen. I want to tell you, church, that we are God's glory. Amen. Yes. Here on this earth. Amen. But he's not looking for a people that would just be statues on the wall. Come Amen. On. He won't, He's not looking for a people that just be a, a, a yes man or whatever person. Amen. He's looking for people that will rise up, that will strategize that will think, amen, and set goals for their life, amen, to become the likeness of Christ. Amen. He predestined us to Come do on. this. And yes. he calls us. He sets it. See, God sat down and strategized. Yes. He set all this up for us. Mm -hmm. Then he calls us. Yes. He goes, Come here. Get into your purpose. Mm -hmm. Get into your yes, purpose. Yes, that's right. It's all set up. Yes. Amen. Sit down. Think. Think about your life. Think what I've done for you. Think of who you are. You are the likeness of Christ. You have been conformed to the likeness of, in other words, you've been transformed. Amen. You've been renewed. Amen. God has renewed our hearts. Amen. amen. But it's not just to sit there. If I could amen. make that point, get that point amen. across. Yeah. There's so much more that God wants us yeah. to do. Yes, that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Did I go over? <laughs> God has some strong goals. And they concern us. God sat down and thought about us. Think about that. That when he went on the cross, he was thinking about us. There was already a strategy in place, amen, that went back thousands of years, even before Christ, amen, through, through the sacrificial lamb, amen, the sacrifice that were given, all being set up to Jesus Christ. It was a strategy to set us free, but we live so much, amen, like we're still in bondage. Mm -hmm. We allow our minds to get in bondage. Oh, we're free in Jesus, amen. But we come in and the things that we do, we're, we're just in bondage. We, we don't go past of what we're doing at the moment. Just having a, a priority goal of com, uh, conformity to Christ limit your own goals. Here's the thing, church. This is why a lot of people won't totally commit to God. This is the main reason. Because you think it's going to interfere with your own goals. Come on. Come on. That's the right. The things that you want to accomplish. Come on. The right. things that you want to do. Yep. Oh, but I had my life all planned out. And, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going to work 20 years. and you know, I don't think they think like that anymore, but I'm going to work 20 <laughs> years in the same company. And I'm going to get my pension and, you know, my 401k, man. Then I'm going to retire and I'm going to, you know, buy myself a little RV and I'm going to travel the world, amen. But if I serve God, if I commit myself to a church and I commit myself to, to ministry, amen, what am I going to? accomplish. Well, what about my own goals? Come on. What about me? You, 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 you hear all that all the time. You know, watch any movie, amen? What's the first thing they, they say when it gets all frustrating and the movie gets heated? It's like, what about me? <laughs> you, what, what, what? I don't have no life? What? I can't do nothing? What? I can't go here? What? You know, it's, it's the cry of the youth today. Oh. What about me? <laughs> well, I want my fast cars and, and, and my money and all this and if I pay my tithes, I'm not going to have all that. Is that life in the pit of hell? Oh, that's, that's right. right. Come on, that's right. Is that life in the pit of hell? Mm -hmm. God wants to help us. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. But we've got to set goals in our life. And the only way we're going to set goals is, is to sit down and strategize. I'm going to have to, you know, bypass some of this stuff. Amen. But, you know what I mean? It, it, it's when we set goals for our lives. And when our priority goal is to please Jesus. Yes. You know what I mean? Sometimes we think, man, we pray and God doesn't hear us. Right. You know, but the Bible does say that and we Amen. forget that little part in the Bible where it says, well, you pray a mist. You're not praying in the will of God. Right. You know what I mean? You're off. You're hitting, you're missing the mark. Amen. You know what I mean? You're not doing what God called you to do. Amen. Because if we did that, he would answer our prayers. Amen. There is no way he could answer a prayer that does not line up with his will. Amen. Pray all you want. Pray to you. You're blue in the face. Amen. He's just not going to bless it. Amen. It has to be within his will. Amen. That's right. I know that offense sometimes, amen? Because we, we, we have so many things. Oh, I'm coming to church, and I'm just going to be part of the church, and I'll help out a little bit, amen? But I'm going to go home and take care of my family, and then, you know what I mean? I'm going to put my money aside, and I'm going to retire, and I'm going to be good. <laughs> You're only here for a moment. John chapter 15, verse 5. I'm going I'm to go by real quick to you. John 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Right. That's you right. got that? Amen. We, we just can't accomplish anything without Christ. That's Man. right. Come we on. need Christ. You want joy in your life? Do the will of God. Amen. Abide with God. He's going to abide with you. Amen. You're going to find that peace. You're going to yes. find that joy. Yes. Isn't yes. that what we're yes. truly looking for? Yes, I mean, how yes. many of us would give up the riches and the glory and all the mansions and all the big house and everything just for a little bit of peace? Amen. Be truthful with yourself. There's people that have all them things but have no joy. Right. John 15 verse 7 says, If ye abide in me and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. See, we, we get the ask and, and you shall receive part. Mm -hmm. But we forget that we got to abide in him. Our thinking has got to be his thinking. His thinking has got to be our, our thinking. Amen. we got to accomplish what God has called us to do. Amen. Those that have, amen, priority, the priority goal of just pleasing Jesus. Amen. They're always going to live the best. Let me just share a few things here, and then I'm going to close. It says, I got two sets of people here. Persons with no goals and persons that have goals. A person without goal is a drifter. A person with a goal has a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. A person without a goal, uh, no excitement in his life. Have you ever seen people just walking around bummed out because they have no goals? Amen. On, a person right. with goal, excitement about, excited about life. Mm -hmm. A person without goals accepts mediocrity. A person with goal pursues excellence. A person without goals, uh, um, he's very uh, critical of others who are successful. A person with goals appreciates others who are successful because they can learn from them. Yes. A person without goal, uh, disappointed with uh, existence. A person with goal has a strong sense of purpose, value, and worth. A person without goals uh, settles for living in a rut. A person with goals seeks a creative, active life. A person without goals is, is a poor steward of God's gifts and times. A person with goals seeks a balanced life yes. that is marked by resources, energy, health, emotional health, and physical health. There is a difference. When we set goals for our life, right. when we sit down and strategize and figure, finally figure things out, yes. and we set goals to accomplish things, we're going to live a more joyful life. Yes. 
Amen. You're going to love what Jesus is doing in your life. Yes. You're not going to look at it as like, oh, Jesus don't want me to have no fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Forget about that. Jesus is going to give you joy and peace. Yes. Amen. A yes. peace that Amen. surpasses all understanding. Amen. Did we get that? God yeah. wants to help us, church. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But we got to sit down and really uh, concentrate on what we're involved in. Yeah. And what we are truly building. Because we're not building our own empire. We're building the kingdom of God. Yeah. This is why fellowship is so important. Yeah. This is why we have pastors go back and forth. Amen. Because it helps build the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes our congregations stop listening to us. And that's what we <laughs> somebody else in. Amen. Shake them up a little bit. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Let's think. Let's, let's have some wisdom. Let's create goals. Let's strategize. Amen. When the enemy comes at us, let's sit down and figure out why is that happening. We, we never do that. Come on. Well, why is the enemy attacking us? Could have been that maybe you had sinned down the road and you just haven't repented. <laughs> <laughs> it could be something that simple. Yep. Maybe it's just more. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just you haven't applied yourself a little bit more. Maybe you haven't sat down and think about why the enemy is attacking you. Well, why is this guy getting a raise and I'm not? Why, why is this guy being promoted and I'm not? Come on. It's, we just got to sit down and think. Sit down and think. Yes. Stop blaming the world. Mm -hmm. Look inward. God wants to work in your life. He wants you to create a strategy to get you where he already right. set up for you. Positions are waiting for you. Yes. But we're the ones that delay it. That's right. We're the ones that delay it. If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed and every eye bowed. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. First of all, let me apologize. I do. I never meant to go that long. Hallelujah. That's why, I, 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 you know, sometimes I got to be careful letting my wife give a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I bring her up because she has a powerful testimony. Yes. And I know that helps. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning, amen, and you're living without God. You've been going in circles. You can't figure it out. Why Why are these things happening in my life? Why can't I ever get ahead? Why, why couldn't I, can't can I ever figure things out? Amen. But you know what? First of all, we need to abide in Jesus. It's that simple. And you're here. Maybe you were invited. Amen. It's your first time. I, 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 I'm not sure. Everybody here. Amen. But maybe you were invited. And you're starting to figure things out now. Through the word of God. And you're starting to realize, you know, you've been doing this all wrong. You've been doing this all by yourself. And God never intended for you to do it on your own. He's there to help us. You're here this afternoon, this evening. You want to receive Christ in your life. You want to abide in, in, in Jesus and you want him to abide in you. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand this evening. We want to pray with you. Don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about the person next to you. Amen. They didn't die on the cross for you. Jesus did. Amen. Jesus did. Anybody this evening. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're backslidden. You know what I mean? Maybe you're in ministry and you're backslidden. You know, it's it's not a thing to be ashamed of, amen? The thing is to get rid of what's ever messing you up. To figure it out. And as you come to the altar, you'll figure it out. God will help you. And as you go and you talk to your pastor or his wife, whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? They'll help you. You know, we, we don't learn to do these things on our own. It, it, it takes somebody coming along and, and helping us to sit down and strategize, strategize with our lives. Yeah. <coughs> Comes in speaking to our pastors, <coughs> their wives. Oh Anybody this evening? Oh, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I take it everybody's saved here. Even the kids, you guys are all saved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You 
accepted Jesus. Amen. You're never too young. You're never too young. No, I wish I would have accepted Jesus when I was straight out of my mother's womb. 